All right, I just wanna show you a couple tips for completing this table. So the really cool thing about Kepler's third law is that it allows us to figure out a planet's orbital period, P, just by knowing how far it is from the star. And so I've told you for each of these planets how far it is from the star, and your job is to calculate then uh, basically the length of a year on that planet. That is, how long does it take to go around the star? So let's do that together. Now I've given you the equation, right? P squared equals A cubed. That's Kepler's third law, but let's just walk through it together and then I'll show you how to measure it to double check. So we're gonna start with A. So Arrakis here has um, this A value, a distance of 0.33. What we need to do is cube it. We need to cube that value. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take 0 0.33 and we're gonna do caret uh, to the third power. And so you probably have a caret button somewhere on your calculator or it's uh, like shift six on your keyboard. And um, I'll hit enter and I get this value. So this is what A cubed is. I'm just gonna copy it. Okay, I'm gonna put that right in the table. So that's kind of one step along the way to figuring out the orbital period. Now, Kepler's third law says that P squared equals A cubed. That means that P squared is the same as what I just pasted here. Those two values are the exact same right, because p squared equals a cubed. And now what I wanna find is what is the orbital period, p? And I know what p squared is. So that means I have to take the square root of that value to get the orbital period. So going back to my calculator now, I'm gonna take the square root of that value and hit enter, and it tells me 0.189. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna round that to 0 0.19, okay? 0 0.19 years, 0 0.19 years. So that's my calculated orbital period. And you could do this calculation right off the bat for all uh, five of these planets. Now, what do I mean by measured orbital period in years? Well, using our simulation, we can create this planet and we can actually measure how long it takes to go around in years because this timer um, actually keeps track of how many years have elapsed in our simulation. Now, the important thing that I told you here is that the scale of this grid is three blocks, one, two, three blocks is one AU. That means for this first planet, 0.33 AU, that's like a third of an AU, is just one block, right? One block would be 0.33 AU. In the same way, like, uh, let's see here, 1.66 AU, well, one AU would be three blocks, and then 0.66 is two more blocks. So this would actually be like five blocks, okay, to get to that many astronomical units. Okay, but we're gonna do uh, Arrakis here. So this is just one AU, so I'm going to uh, make sure I'm on Kepler's third law, zero eccentricity, and I'm just gonna click right here on that block to make, yeah, my planet. And now I can measure the time it takes to go around once, that's the orbital period. Now, because it's kind of fast, right? It's just like, I'm predicting it's only gonna be 0.19 seconds or years, but it's going it's going fast, all right? Um, what I can do is actually like the, the most accurate way to measure this would be to actually count 10 times around, count 10 times around and then just divide my number by 10. So I'm gonna start it when it gets to right here and then I'm gonna count 10 times around. So here we go on your mark, get set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, sweet, okay, so my timer got 1.98 years, but that was for 10 orbits, which means one orbit was 0.198. That's pretty cool. 0.198, I could either record that or I could round that to maybe 0 0.20. All right, and that's what you're gonna do for each one of these. And I hope that you're seeing that the calculation P squared equals A cubed is a very accurate uh, calculation that you're actually close with your measured values. If you find that those values are way off from one another, chances are you've done something wrong. Okay, I hope that helps.